Thank you, Dr. Drasner. Uh, we're going to uh, finish up uh, this section, and um, I am very honored and very pleased to welcome, we all are, uh, Professor Scott Grundy, who will discuss and teach us about the lipid lowering guidelines. Dr. Grundy will speak from the back of the room. Dr. Grundy, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing on that audio? Uh, how am I doing? You tell me. Can you hear? Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, for the last 25 years, we've, statins have been the mainstay of treatment of cholesterol. They're fantastic drugs and have, we think, saved the lives of many people or at least prolonged them. Uh, and that was about it, and there, there weren't really many other alternatives. However, in the past uh, year, uh, some additional things have been added to the cholesterol-lowering uh, regime, which may in the future uh, really add a lot. So I'd like to talk about those today. And all of this has been published in the last year, so this has been a big year uh, for cholesterol management. Next slide. This is a publication from the Cholesterol Treatment Trialist Collaboration, and uh, it is a meta-analysis of all the uh, statin trials. It includes a huge number of people, both men and women. And what they found was that for every uh, millimole per DL, that's about 40 milligram per DL, uh, reduction in uh, cholesterol levels, uh, there is a 22% reduction in risk for uh, CVD events and a 16% in women. So with the drugs that we have available, with statins, we can get at least twice that much. So that translates and has been shown to uh, reduce risk uh, at least 40% in men and maybe a little bit less in women. The data are not quite as good, but about the same. And the good point here is there's no increase in cancer in all these trials and no increase in non-cardiovascular mortality. Next slide. <laughs> now, uh, this year we had published the uh, Improve It trial in which uh, simvastatin plus azetamib was combined with simvastatin alone at, at high doses to see whether there was additional benefit. This was a long trial. It went on and on. Uh, there were 18,000 patients. Uh, they were recruited by having acute coronary syndromes recently. They selected for having relatively low LDL. They were already on statins. And the primary endpoint was a composite of cardiovascular disease, and they had a mean follow-up of six years. Next slide. Uh, so here's the design of that, basically what I said. They have standard medical therapy plus aspirin and they either got simvastatin 40 milligrams or uh, simvastatin plus azetamide 10 and 40. They were followed uh, frequently, and I had the privilege of being the chair of the data monitoring committee for this trial, and it took a long time for us to really begin to see the benefit, but once it emerged, it was quite obvious. Next slide. Uh, <coughs> the LDL levels were reduced more on azetamide plus simvastatin, as you can see in yellow compared to simvastatin alone. Uh, it was about a 15 milligram uh, per DL reduction when azetamide was added. Next slide. Next slide, please. And uh, here are the results of the trial. Uh, there was a significant reduction of about 6 or 7 percent uh, in major cardiovascular event over the trial and the number needed to treat was 50, which is not too bad. So this suggests that there is benefit from adding azetamide to your patients with statins, and I think that would be what I would do. Anybody who has cardiovascular disease uh, and are on statins and got a pretty good LDL lowering, I would tend to add azetamide in combination because over the lifetime of the patient, there should be additional risk reduction. Next slide. So here's some of the conclusions of this trial. Uh, one thing important, it showed that non-statin lowering of LDL with azetamide reduces cardiovascular events. Some people thought that statins had a lot of effects besides just LDL lowering and that maybe 
other ways would not be beneficial, but clearly they are as shown here. It also indicates the lower the better, which is sort of my motto in uh, LDL levels, and it confirms the safety of zetamide. There's absolutely no side effects. Uh, so it uh, reaffirms the LDL hypothesis that reducing LDL prevents events, and these could be considered for future guidelines. Next slide. Well, the, the new player on the block it has even more potential, and that is a, an inhibitor of a protein called PCSK9. PCSK9 is a protein that circulates in our bloodstream, and it has an unusual action. It binds onto the LDL receptor, which removes the LDL from the circulation and causes its degradation. This is shown in a scheme here. But basically, PCSK9 uh, removes the LDL receptor, and there's less expression of it, so you don't get as much LDL lowering as you might. Next slide. This is a study, a large study, actually carried out by one of my collaborators and his team, Jonathan Cohen, Helen Hobbs, and other people here at UT Southwestern. And they uh, looked at uh, patients who had mutations in that protein. Uh, they caused it to be uh, non-effective for reducing LDL receptors. And those that had the mutation, they had lower LDL levels, as uh, you can see here. Uh, and they also had a, uh, a much lower event rate. Uh, in fact, it almost wiped out coronary heart disease if you had that mutation, which means you had a low LDL your whole life. I think that's the lesson from this story, is if you have a low LDL, it'd be nice to have it for your whole life, and it's really going to do a lot for preventing future cardiovascular events. Next slide. Uh, now this... Uh, uh, what's happened is that this immediately after the discovery and these results, uh, drug companies began to go to work to see if they could produce inhibitors of the PCSK9 protein. And this is an example from one study in which they looked at patients with familial hypercholesterolemia, FH, who have very high LDL levels. They gave them uh, which, uh, this uh, PCSK9 inhibitor, uh, which... Uh, uh, makes more LDL receptors available and it lowers the LDL level. And you can see, even without statins, uh, they got about a 50, close to a 50% reduction in LDL. So uh, these uh, inhibitors have the equal potency of statins in lowering LDL level. Next slide. Now, there have been uh, two trials which have been carried far enough to be reviewed and uh, presented in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, this is one called Alirobkamab, and uh, uh, this trial, the Odyssey trial, had 2,341 patients. They were on a placebo on maximum tolerated statin dose, and then on the treatment arm, they kept had the same treatment, but they uh, added the uh, inhibitor, and it uh, reduced LDL by 62% beyond the statin, so uh, the uh, combination really knocked the LDL to very low levels, and in a period of about three years, it has reduced uh, ASCVD events by 48%. Now, this is, in some ways, must be considered preliminary because this is going to be a longer-term trial, but this trial, I think, influenced the FDA to allow uh, the PCSK9 inhibitors to uh, to come on the market. Unfortunately, at a high price, but hopefully with time, the price will go down. Next slide. Another trial, or two trials, were combined together called Osler 1 and 2, and uh, uh, Evolocumab was used in this trial, another inhibitor, 4, 000, over 4,000 patients, and they were followed for 11 months for major cardiovascular events, an average of 11 months. Next slide. Uh, the baseline LDL in this study was 120, uh, and most of these people had very high LDLs to begin with. They had like familial hypercholesterolemia, so they had not responded adequately. But adding uh, the inhibitor reduced LDL cholesterol by 61% more to a level of 48 milligram per DL. 
and the risk for major cardiovascular events during this trial on therapy was reduced by 53% in a relatively short time. Uh, there was a report of more frequent not neurocognitive events. I'm not quite sure what that means, but in all the side effects, I don't know, it may cause people to have a little cognitive dysfunction. That will have to be evaluated in more detail. Next slide. So uh, I think one of the main uses of this uh, approach is to treat patients with statin intolerance. Besides, there are a lot of patients who don't get the goal who have maximal therapy, but there are about 10% of the patients that we see with treated with statins just can't tolerate the drug. And I work in the lipid clinic, and we get flooded with these patients, and it's a dilemma. We don't know what to do. We try all the different statins without a lot of benefit. Some we have a little success with, but by and large, it's a big problem for those patients. And what this study just shows is a preliminary study, how much LDL reduction you can get with just using uh, the inhibitor alone uh, without uh, uh, statins. So this holds a lot of promise, I think. Next slide, please. So in summary, the indications for PCSK9 inhibitors would be patients with familial hypercholesterolemia whose LDL levels are very high and who are at high lifetime risk. Patients at very high risk, let's say they have coronary heart disease or had a stroke and they're not at LDL goal, their LDL is still elevated on statin therapy. That they are potential candidates. And then finally, the statin intolerant patients. About 10% of patients treated with statins uh, would uh, benefit uh, from these drugs. So that's where we stand right now with the uh, uh, cholesterol lowering therapy. All of this just came out in the last year, so it's quite an amazing story. Thank you very much.